Singapore is studying possible regulatory measures to reduce sodium content in food as it steps up efforts to get the food industry and the population to shift to healthier options. Health Minister Ong Yi Kang said on Wednesday that Singapore has studied how other countries have cut sodium content. Examples he cited included Chile, where products exceeding the stipulated sodium threshold must have a higher in sodium warning label. And Finland, which regulates sodium limits for selected packaged food items that are the main contributors of sodium in the local diet. Both measures have worked. They have spurred industry reformulation and reduced their population sodium intake. We will draw lessons from these examples to consider what would be suitable to implement in our local context, said Mr. Ong. He was speaking at the launch of Project Reset, a major cardiovascular research project. The latest national surveys have shown that Singaporeans are eating too much salt, and the proportion of those with high blood pressure has nearly doubled from 2010 to more than a third of the population. Professor Tan Hui Chim, a senior consultant at the National University Heart Centre, Singapore, believes that the strategies the government took in reducing sugar to bring down the diabetes rate can also apply to salt reduction to lower the hypertension rate. This effort will have to involve many stakeholders, not only individuals, but also the government, the food processing industry and the salt manufacturers, he said. The leadership must come from the government to set goals and targets for salt reduction and implement strategies which can be broadly divided into two aspects, public education and working with the food industry and manufacturers. Professor Tan said the government can impose legislative control measures to provide a system of incentives and disincentives for food industries to set up surveillance and monitoring systems to ensure that the strategies are carried out. He pointed out that a 1G reduction of salt per day can lower the risk of heart disease by 4% and stroke by 6%, for instance. Citing a five-year salt substitute and stroke study in China, carried out from 2014 on over 20,000 Chinese, Professor Tan said it showed that a 25% reduction in salt can cut stroke by 14% and death by 12%. In the meantime, the Health Promotion Board HPB will launch a campaign to encourage the industry and food and beverage operators to pledge to reduce sodium content in their dishes to the levels in 2010. This comes as an HPB market study showed that between 2010 and 2023, the sodium content of dishes had gone up by an average of 20%. Mr. Ong said, somehow, over the years, our cooks and hawkers are adding more salt and sauces to their dishes. According to a food composition analysis carried out by HPB, a serving of mee goreng used to contain one. 946 mg of sodium in 2010 to 2012, but that has since sought 98% to 3,854 mg in 2023. Just a plate would bust a person's daily recommended sodium intake of 2,000 mg. Other sodium-laden dishes that have become even salter over the years are steamed chicken rice one. 565 mg of sodium in 2023, compared with 949 mg from 2010 to 2012 in Seafood Hall Fund, which has 37% more sodium today, 2,575 mg, up from 1,885 mg between 2010 and 2012. Mr. Ong said food and beverage operators can cut sodium content by switching to lower sodium salt or adding less salt or condiments like soya sauce and fish sauce. Some may raise the concern that with less salt and soya sauce, our food will be less tasty. Some may even point out that ingredients are getting more expensive. 
so sauces with high sodium are used as a lower cost substitute. This may be true for some dishes, but it is also likely that having eaten more salty dishes over the years, our taste buds have gotten used to it and equate saltiness with tastiness. We need to try to roll back our taste buds as well, said the minister. We must remember that Southeast Asia has been the land of spices. We use a great variety of spices and ingredients in our food, and we use a wide range of meats, seafood, vegetables and fruits in our local dishes. All of them add natural flavors to our food, said Mr. Ong, who also called on diners to do their part and request less salty dishes. There will, however, be challenges for restaurants and food manufacturers in reducing sodium. Dr. Kalpana Baskaran, president of the Singapore Nutrition and Dietetics Association, said that besides giving taste, salt has many other functions. Salt is an efficient clean label preservative as it binds water and inhibits microbial growth. It also plays a major role in flavor balance, and reducing it can distort bitter, sour and sweet notes. Salt can also enhance the perception of fullness and mouthfeel, giving an added thickness to soups. She said. She added that the industry is tapping alternatives like mineral salts and yeast extracts to reduce sodium in food and it has to continue to innovate to produce lower sodium products that do not impact taste, texture and shelf life. Homegrown chain The Soup Spoon is among the restaurants that have committed to reducing sodium in dishes. Co-founder Anna Lim say its soups are well below the recommended daily limit of 2. 000 mg of sodium per day. A 350g regular-sized bowl of mushroom stroganoff contains 379 mg of sodium, and a bowl of roasted pumpkin soup contains 1,151 mg of sodium. We have been looking continuously at lower sodium salt options in our recipes, and conducted many rounds of taste tests to ensure our recipes and tastes are not compromised, said Miss Lim. We also use herbs and spices and most importantly, cooking every soup from scratch with fresh ingredients to ensure the soup remains true to our original recipe. Soy sauce manufacturer Huang Chong Thai has also committed to cutting sodium in its products. Co-owner and business development manager Alvin Chu said that currently, about 35% of its consumer products are lower sodium products, and the company aims to increase this to 70% by 2026. He acknowledged the challenges in sodium reduction. As soy sauce is fermented with salt water, instead of using salt as a natural preservative, which is very traditional, we have shifted out of it many years ago. There are other ways to preserve a sauce. From cooking techniques to storage and how we fill the bottles. Using technology for indoor control fermentation, our soy sauce is less salty and tastes more umami, said Mr. Chu. On Wednesday, the health minister also gave an update on a sodium reduction strategy launched in 2022 to encourage suppliers to replace regular salt with lower sodium alternatives such as potassium salt. Mr. Ong said the results have been encouraging, with three major suppliers, accounting for close to half of the food and beverage salt market share, now supplying lower sodium salt. More than 350 hawkers and coffee shop and food court stalls island-wide, as well as close to 150 caterers, are already using lower sodium ingredients. But he acknowledged that the effort has given rise to concerns like cost. Although suppliers have cut the price of lower sodium salt from $10 per kg to about $4 per kg with HPB's industry grant support, the lower sodium option still costs $3 more than regular salt. But given that a typical household uses about a kilogram of salt a year, 
The additional spending to convert to lower sodium salt is about $3 a year. For $3 more a year, we can significantly lower the risk of hypertension, heart attack and stroke. So I hope more households will consider this, said Mr. Ong. The Ministry of Health has also consulted medical experts on concerns from people with chronic kidney disease that lower sodium salt, specifically potassium-enriched salt, can harm them. Clinicians and professional bodies are planning to issue written formal advice that these alternatives are safe for individuals with early-stage chronic kidney disease, said Mr. Ong. For those with late-stage chronic kidney disease, they should limit consumption of all forms of salt, whether it is regular salt or potassium-enriched salt.